All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll prove the second part of the integral test, which in this case says that if the integral of f is finite, then the series converges. So part two, as usual, suppose f is non-negative and decreasing, think like one over x squared, then if the integral from one to infinity of f of x dx is finite, then the corresponding series converges. So sum from one to infinity of f of n converges. So again, if the area under f from 1 to infinity is finite, then the corresponding series converges. And let me do another example. In this case, consider f of x equals 1 over x squared. Then uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, well, an antiderivative is minus 1 over x from 1 to infinity, which becomes minus 1 over infinity plus 1 over 1, which is 1, which is finite. Therefore, the series of 1 over n squared uh, converges. So the series from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared converges. That said, I want to give you a little warning because in general, the value of the integral has nothing to do with the value of the series. Because in fact, you can show that the series here goes to pi squared over six, which has nothing to do with one, the value of the integral. All right, and now I'm gonna prove this again in a special case of one over x squared, but it's not such a special case because you can just replace one over x squared with f and still get the same proof. So proof in the special case where f is one over x squared. So proof in the case f of x equals 1 over x squared. Now remember, how do you show that the series converges? You have to look at the partial sums again. So look at partial sums. Partially sum, but a whole lot of fun. Ooh, that almost rhymes too. So Sn, which is simply the sum from k from 1 to n of 1 over k squared, which is just 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus dot 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 plus 1 over n squared. And now remember something I talked about right at the beginning when we discussed series. Well, first of all, each term is positive. So to test if the series converges, it is enough to check that Sn is bounded. So recall enough to check that the um, sequence of partial sums is bounded. So we have to find some constant independent of n such that this is smaller than or equal to that constant. And um, all right, and by the way, this if you don't remember, this just follows then from the monotone sequence theorem because then you have an increasing sequence that's bounded above and therefore converges. All right, and now again, the idea is we would like to compare uh, Sn with some area under the function. So let's do that. So in other words, let's compare Sn with some rectangles. So Sn is 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus dot 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 plus 1 over n squared. And now let's consider the following rectangle. So it's quite interesting. Before we had a right point sum, 
And now before we had the left point sum, and now we want to consider the right point sum. So again, this is our function, f of x is 1 over x squared. And in the first step, consider the rectangle with base 1 and height 1. So consider the following rectangle and notice what is the area of the rectangle. Well, 1 times 1, so the area is 1. And then let's continue. Now consider the rectangle with base 1, 2 and area, well, f of 2, which is 1 quarter, or height 1 quarter. Then this area is 1 quarter. Well, and then you can continue. Then consider the rectangle with base 2, 3 and height 1 ninth, or in this case the area then becomes 1 ninth. So first rectangle, second rectangle, third rectangle, up to the nth rectangle. So uh, n minus 1 comma n, like this if you'd like. And then what is uh, the, uh, well, the base is 1, the height is 1 over n squared. Therefore, the area is 1 over n squared. Very good. So then what does the sum represent? The sum is just the sum of all the areas of the rectangles. So sum of areas of n rectangles. Now, uh, just a small technicality, remember the integral is from 1 to infinity, but uh, that's not a big problem. Let's just ignore the first rectangle. So if you'd like, um, this just becomes what? So it becomes 1 plus the other rectangles. So uh, 1 plus the areas of uh, rectangles 2, 3, da, 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 up to n. Because you see the second rectangle starts at 1, which is precisely what we want. And now notice. Those rectangles, they're smaller than the area under the function. Because you see, the area under the function is this, and the rectangles are strictly inside. So in particular, the rectangles, the sum of the areas of the rectangles, is smaller than the integral from 1 to n of your function. So this becomes... 1 plus the integral from 1 to n of, let's say, f of x dx. And again, just as before, the reason why this is true is because the function is decreasing. Because let's say on a generic interval, so if you want k minus 1, comma k, well, the function is decreasing, meaning that... Um, And the, the, the right point of f is smaller than all the preceding points. So in particular, the rectangle of uh, height 1 over k squared is smaller than the area under the function from k minus 1 to k. And that's why if you just sum everything up, you get that the sum of the areas of the uh, Rectangles 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to n is less than the area under the function. Now, in general, well, we don't really know exactly what this is, and also the problem is this depends on n. However, notice the area under f from 1 to n is definitely smaller than the area under f from 1 to infinity. 
So this whole thing is Lester equal to 1 plus the area from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. So what do we obtain? We're actually done in this case. Why? Because what we found, Sn just becomes less than or equal to this thing. So this implies Sn is less than or equal to 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. But the point is this doesn't depend on n anymore. So let's call this capital M. And notice, because this integral is finite, the whole thing is finite. So in particular, what we obtain is, well, first of all, well, Sn is just a sum of positive terms. So it's positive, and so we get Sn is between 0 and m. So the absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to m, and that's for all n. And therefore, we obtain indeed our result that Sn is bounded. And since it's bounded, remember by the first thing I told you today, uh, we get that the series converges. So the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared converges. All right, very good. And again, there was nothing special about the series 1 over n squared. Any function uh, with the finite integral works. And in fact, let's prove the following corollary that it's also true for the p-series where p is strictly greater than 1. So, let me erase this beautiful picture. So corollary. So if p is greater than 1, then the p-series converges, the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p converges. And unfortunately, this time we cannot really compare this to anything, so we have to use the integral test. So let's calculate the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx. Man, remember Windows XP? That was good times, good times. And then we had integral from 1 to infinity of one, x to the minus p dx. And this becomes x to the uh, 1 minus p over 1 minus p from 1 to infinity. And then the point is, this becomes, uh, well, infinity to the 1 minus p. But remember, 1 minus p is uh, negative like think x to the minus 1 as x goes to infinity. So this becomes 0 minus 1 over 1 minus p. And this becomes 1 over p minus 1. And this is finite. So because the integral is finite, we obtain that the p-series converges. And lastly, uh, sort of combining this with the corollary from last time, we get that. Remember last time we showed that if p is less than or equal to 1, this diverges. If p is greater than, greater than 1, this converges. So it converges if and only if p is greater than 1. So this p series converges if and only if p is greater than 1. I know this has been bothering you for since the beginning of the uh, playlist that um, <laughs> why is it true that the p-series converges in that case? But now we have shown this. Um, all right, thank you very much.